In this video, we want to take a look at how to do a conditional loop. That is a loop that repeats potentially indefinitely until a condition is no longer met. There's a lot of different uses for this. Everything from reading a file until we get to the end or waiting for user input. So let's take a look at how we would do something like this. We're going to come over here to our Lucid chart and we're going to start with a start terminator like we normally do. And then we're going to define a variable that we're going to use. And this could be anything we want. Because we don't have any types of predefined values or keywords in a flowchart, we can use something like continue. Now, you'll find that a lot of times we can't do this in a programming language because continue is a built-in reserve word. But for our purposes, we're not going to worry about that. We'll let the programmer figure that out. So we're going to say continue equals y. And so my start is then going to flow to continue. And then I'm going to have a decision I'm going to make. I'm going to say if continue equals y, then we're going to go do some stuff. What are we going to do? We're not there yet. First, we need to connect continue to our decision. And then we're going to come over here and do a simple printout in this example. We're just going to say print the app is running. Now, obviously, we might have a lot more other things we're going to do. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to print out something simple and connect our yes flow line to our printout. What we're going to do is we're going to specify this is an input. We're going to say, should we continue y slash n and this is going to go into our continue variable so our print statement is going to go into our next input and then we're going to draw a flow line that's going to take us from this input statement all the way over to our flow line where we start before our decision now you're going to notice that looks a lot like how we did a loop when we did a counting looping you're correct so the main difference here is that instead of incrementing a value and changing it automatically, we're getting the input from a user. Do we want to continue? Yes. And they're going to collect the Y. Notice we gave them a hint, Y slash N. We could have said yes slash no or press Q to quit or whatever would make sense for our condition to work. So yes, we're going to continue. We're going to print out the app is running. And then we're going to get an input and then we're going to come back and see do we want to do this again and we're going to keep on doing this and we could do this for one time ten thousand times until the computer crashes doesn't matter we don't know how long it's going to take and that's what we call a conditional loop it's just as long as the condition keeps being true now what happens when the person no longer types in why well then we need to do something else in our case we're just going to bring a terminator down here like we always do and click end. Then we connect our no decision to our end terminator and we're done. So it's a pretty simple process of allowing us to do a condition that's going to run an unknown number of times. And I use these all the times in different types of applications. So this is a good thing for you to have some experience with. Hopefully you found this helpful for you. If so, you might want to check out our next video on how do we call a predefined procedure. That is one that's defined someplace else for us.